Welcome back. And um, yesterday uh, was Easter Sunday. And in perhaps as many as hundreds of different languages, um, a, a, a common word would have been shouted out. He is risen. And congregations in all the different languages of this world would have responded, he is risen indeed. And of course, they would have been doing that not by gathering together, but individually in our little own spaces where we could do this with such joy. And, uh, and I don't know whether it would be anything like this for you, but I went outside and I shouted <laughs> that in my neighborhood. If we can hang out of our balconies and clap the, the um, very brave people who are moving into this epicenter, especially in New York City, the healthcare workers, if we can bang saucepans and, and shout out loud for them, Surely we can do this for the hope that we have, because we really do have this hope, this Prince of Peace, um, who came in order that we might be able to weather storms like this with something of a different attitude, not a, an attitude of fear, because according to my, my teacup, <laughs> by the way, Yes, it does have the word love on it. And a few people were writing to me and saying, what, what does it say on your teacup? Well, it, it says teacup and said, love is patient, is kind, love never fails. So, 1 Corinthians 12. So, and as a result of this and, and crying out, he has risen indeed. Um, I went walking around my neighborhood and I noticed a really interesting thing, and I guess it happens every Easter time. And uh, we look at Easter with eggs, and we look at Easter with daffodils and, 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 and bunny rabbits and things like this. But there is also that inexpressible joy that love drives out all fear. And uh, I've heard people expressing their fact that they're fearful, and I think that's perfectly reasonable. It's, um, it makes sense. And the thing that is almost doesn't make sense is that perfect love drives out all fear. So this love that Jesus is talking about, he described to us in this amazing way by being tortured to death. For me and for you. And, 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 and he was saying in doing that, no greater love has man than this. He, he knew exactly what it was that he was doing. And we, because we've been handed down this story for so many years now, know, know the story. I was thinking uh, just this morning about the, um, the old scripture in Habakkuk. I love that name. Imagine having a name like Habakkuk. It's a bit, it, yeah, you could run for some kind of public office with Habakkuk. It would be memorable. And he wrote in the second chapter um, that we should make a message clearly understood. Write it plainly on a tablet, the scripture says. Um, so that the one that reads it, or the herald that reads it, may run with it. And as I understand it, in those days, they used to have a kind of clay, a piece of clay, a tile, and would write the message on that tile and put it on um, a, a raised table of some kind in, in where people shopped uh, in the bazaar or whatever, in the marketplace so that somebody could walk past this message and look at it and, and absorb what it was actually meaning without having to pick it up and carry it off. Um, they would be, they, it, would, it would be enough to be plainly understood to then go on and hand it on 
to somebody else. So I think when Jesus was challenged in this amazing way by people who really wanted to kill him because he was definitely getting in their way, in their power struggle to organize the culture of their day. And um, when they said to him, which is, a, which is the greatest commandment of them all? And they were meaning that word commandment. Um, it wasn't uh, which is the greatest piece of advice or the best how to. This was commanded. This was a commandment. There were about 164 of them in the day when this individual was asking this of Jesus. So he, he, he was seeking to trap him. But Jesus responded to that by simply saying, love God. The greatest commandment of all is to love God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. He didn't stop exactly there, but just look at that. First of all, he's saying, love with every single thing you've got. Can you look back at, um, at a time when you loved like that? Your husband, your wife, um, your children, someone, somewhere, somehow. Um, I've looked back recently to remember, just, just to try and rephrase in my own mind what the word love means. And uh, I'm rather interested in the word preoccupation. Because when I was waiting to marry at Trina, my wife Trina, um, uh, when we were 21 years of age, I was counting off the days <laughs> and, and she would write to me every day and I would write to her every day and we'd pour out our love for each other. I was preoccupied with loving her. There's no question. And yet I, I then fast forward a few years and I had to go to New Zealand uh, for um, six months and left her behind and she had to come and catch me up. And I only wrote to her three times. I was preoccupied at that time, was trying to get my feet on the ground and save the money I needed to do to get our little apartment ready and then welcome her and our little daughter Tessa home to their new home, so many thousands of miles away from England, 12,000 miles. And um, I, I can justify that. I can look back upon that and say, yeah, well, of course I was preoccupied. I was making a nest and that takes preoccupation. But that I didn't write more than three letters. And when Trina came um, to come into my presence after six months, and I was so longing to see her, and she looked so beautiful, and she said, you know, you only wrote three times, and I don't know whether you love me anymore like you did. In other words, write daily. She didn't say that, but that's what she was comparing, that love to the other love. And, you know, when I was looking back about this, because I really wanted to know how I can love God in the same way. Well, not really the same way, but with something of the same intensity, something with the same preoccupation that I gave towards Trina in those early days. How could I love him? Isn't this what Jesus was saying? Just love God with a total preoccupation with everything you've got. And uh, I could see that I didn't and I wasn't. And I could see how hard it would be. And it became a kind of preoccupation with me about how I might love that way. And then Jesus went on remarkably to the next verse that he had, because he was only asked for one commandment, the greatest one, but then he linked it to the second. And the second is similar, he said. Love your neighbor as yourself. Isn't this what we are now doing? I think so. I'm trying the best I can to love myself by spraying a package that comes in before it comes into my little apartment. I spray it down and I open the package up and I put it away and then I descend and either wash my hands or, um, or put a, you know, 
the, the degrees are on it. Um, so I'm doing everything I can for me. But the reason I'm doing it for me is as love your neighbor as yourself. So this self-care then spills over to my neighbor. And uh, that I am less likely to be a carrier and start shedding the virus for people that I really love a lot. So for me, the big test nowadays, for me, day by day, is to take the first part of that scripture, love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and attach it to the second one, as if it was two parts of just one message. And because, you see, Jesus went on after that, and he said, upon these commandments depend or hang all the law, all 164, and all the prophets. I mean, everything, the big Bible book that we have, it's all dependent upon that thing. It's not the golden rule. It's not do unto others. That, that you see, is, is, is a purely human issue, as there's love your neighbor as yourself. But when you put the two together, when you put the love of God which first was displayed to us, and then we display it back to him. And that's similar to that when we start loving ourselves and loving our neighbors. And I can tell you this quite definitely. This has transformed my life, especially at a time like this. And that would be my prayer for you. I would hope that I've written that little message plainly enough on a tablet and left it in the marketplace and that you would pick it up and run with it and pass it on to someone else, please. God bless you.